VMworld 2016. And if you look at VMworld 2016, one of the things, of course, we're talking about is Flash. We've been talking about Flash for a number of years. But over the past few years, we've been really focused on things like Oracle, Microsoft SQL, making those databases really perform. But Flash is evolving along with the data center. And so today, uh, IT professionals are struggling with applications that are now becoming scale out instead of scale up. We're dealing with size and growth of data and objects that are just tremendous in size, being driven by sensors and the Internet of Things and among other things other than users. Joining me to discuss these problems and how they can be solved is Par Botas. He is the Vice President of Flashblade with Pure Storage. Par, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you. Great to be here. So, I, I mean, I get Oracle and I get Microsoft SQL scale up environments, basically, but what, what, what kind of environments scale out? What does that mean? So, if you look at new, new modern type of applications, they kind of moved away from sort of big monolithic servers that has the entire data sets available to them into more distributed systems where lots and lots of small computers interact with the storage system typically over Ethernet and, and forming a much, much larger applications by adding lots of small nodes to it. And that's kind of the predominant way of new type of architectures evolving and coming to, together. So we're talking about applications like what, Hadoop and Splunk and things like that? So this is kind of one type of class of applications, but you can look at the other types uh, like, like uh, the more classical scale applications, the one we use for ship designs, the one we use for, for, for designing semiconductors, mm -hmm. CAD CAM, the, the, the mechanisms that existed to build Hollywood movies, like, like famous movies like, like Avatar and similar, the, the, the new Star Wars movies. They all sort of generated the special effects on a large cluster of computers that also interacts with the data set in unison. Okay, so we're throwing a lot of processing power distributed across a lot of different servers now. It's correct, and, and when you want to run sort of one application so over 40, 50,000 CPU cores, there's no single server on the planet that can do that. True, right. And, and, and you might think like 40,000, nobody has that, right? Right. It's becoming commonplace. Yeah. Genome sequencing in hospital for personalized medicine, yeah, it's the same architecture. A couple of thousand cores, all interacting unison. All right, okay. And then let's talk about the data side of this as well, right? We're, we're seeing a tremendous growth just in the number of files and objects we have to deal with uh, every day, right? You, you are, you are. I mean, th this is the other thing that's kind of amazing to me, right? So the database, the corporate database, tend to go rise and fall with GDP. Right. Three percent year in, year out, right? Mm -hmm. Versus, versus when, when you look at the, the, the scientific side of the world, where we're sensor data, where we're analytics, where we're things like genomes or special effects or, or other things that are computer originated rather than human -oriented, originated, tends to be much, much more in tune with Moore's law. They scale with Moore's law. In some cases, it scales faster than Moore's law. Right. And, and that pushes a whole different set of problems into the storage systems. Obviously, what we think about when we start talking about a lot of objects and files, you know, we start thinking about object storage. And when I, you know, I think when most people today hear object storage, they think cheap and deep, uh, hard drive based storage. Well, we know Pure Storage is sort of a flash company. What are yeah. you guys doing in an object storage space? So, so fundamentally, the way I think about objects is, is it's an addressing scheme. And I, I argue the old school, most fundamental object server was the file access, where the file itself was an object, mm -hmm. the bucket was a directory, and you can have objects within objects, directories and subdirectories. Right. And of course, that's now evolved into new forms of object interfaces where you relax, relax things like consistency and coherency, but, but fundamentally, they kind of offer the same behavior. You have a name, you're trying to access content that mm -hmm. is represented by that sure. name. As, 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 as these systems grow, as they start taking off, this is a much more convenient way for interacting with data, particularly when you're in a scale-out system. Right. So when we designed Flashblade, one of the things we set out very carefully to do was to make sure we're not designing for a specific access pattern, nor are we designing specifically for a type of, of, of application. And, and we want to make sure we can change to different access methods, whether it's NFS or your S3 interface or whatever comes next. Okay. Our, our system is somewhat agnostic to that, and it, it kind of it's very much software definable, so we can install more ob interfaces and evolve it. And that, that, that's probably a good idea, especially this this market is still uh, you know very much evolving, right? It's, oh, it's certainly totally. not mature, so there could be clearly new interfaces that oh, we don't absolutely. even know about, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And and one of the things you asked earlier is like, but. You know, isn't this for cheap and deep? Right. right? Uh, it's a great point, right? So the key thing with Flash to be aware of is Flash is increasing at a dramatic pace. And, and Flash was designed for consumers. Right. right? Your, your cell phone, your tablet. Sure. These are some of the most 
cost optimized areas in technology. Right. Much more so than anything in enterprise tech. Sure. The volumes are significantly higher. I read somewhere that 96% of all flash goes to consumer. Only 4% goes to corporations. Right. So, so flash for consumers wasn't selected because it's fast. Right. It also wasn't selected because it was expensive. It was selected because it's efficient. It's physically small, so our devices shrink. And, and because it is really, really cost efficient if you use it well. Okay. So but density is a big win here. Density flash. is key. The second thing is the way we surround circuitry around the flash, the CPUs, the DRAM, the, the other hardware, this is kind of what drives up the cost of flash. And, and when you try to sort of shoehorn it in into a uh, some magnetic drive form factor, mm -hmm. instead of taking advantage of flash for what it is and interacting with it the way consumer devices do, then, then you get a more expensive system. Right. We got rid of all of that. We don't speak SaaS, we don't speak SADA. We, we speak to Flash in a very native way, just like your cell phone is doing. Okay. And as a result, we can reduce all the components except Flash. Okay. Well, yeah. I wish we had an example of this that you could show me. Sure, let me, let me show you. So this is what we built. Oh, we have one, that's awesome. Video Magic. Uh, so this is the Flash Blade system. This okay. is actually something that, that is pretty special. So, so now, is this, is this storage or is this a, a node with, a, is, this a, is this a complete node? This is a self-contained computer. Okay. And so it's what we call a flash blade. And, and you can have sort of up to 15 of these in a chassis. Okay. And you slide them in like this. Right? Okay. In the back, we have connectors. It gives you power. It gives you network connectivity. Okay. It gives you a little bit of control. Uh, we have a relatively small CPU. It, it's really only an eight core CPU. Okay. 128 gig of DRAM, 52 terabyte of flash. Okay, and then do I run do I run my applications on this too, or do my ac applications attach to basically a storage cluster? So we designed this to be a network attached storage device. So okay. you you speak to this over a network. Okay. You so using NFS or, or S3 NFS, or something. NFS, S3. We, okay. we actually work on so what's the next protocols we should introduce after this. Okay. And and we basically convert between these protocols to flash in the CPU. But we, we don't really rely on things like caching and other schemes for interacting with, with the flash layer. It's, okay. It's, and then how much capacity are we dealing with here? It's in, in terms of flash, 52 terabytes. Wow, that's a lot of capacity in well, small think space. About it, that's raw, that's raw. Okay. Uh, as, as, you, as, you, as you add data reduction technologies, we're counting usually three into one for these types of data sets. Mm -hmm. uh, some data, like, like virtual machines and others, uh, back up. They, they typically benefit more from deduplication. Right. But for these types of data sets that we see, we see typically three into one. Okay. Uh, sometimes we see much less. For instance, if you do uh, genome sequencing, maybe 1.2, 1.5. Okay. So this is really small. How do you guys manage like power and cooling? Well, it's a great question. So we put 15 of these in a chassis. Okay. So it's for you, as you can tell. Okay. Um, we use 1800 watts at full load. Okay. And if you look up front, it looks solid. Mm -hmm. But if you look from the side, you notice it is not. It's actually quite open. It's 75% open, so we can send lots and lots of air through this and we can cool it. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah, this is a pretty ingenious design, both from the hardware and from the software. Okay, well, fair, fair. Yeah. Um, so then, I guess that one of the advantages, obviously, we talked about is density, but clearly these environments can gain from a performance, right? The, the faster I can process that uh, genome sequence, as an example, the happier everybody's going to be, right? Absolutely. Or, or pick another example, self-driving cars, right? The more we can process data for more nodes, the more we can read, lead to result quickly, the better off we are. And so the flash plate system, we optimize that for having a lot of concurrency, so the more nodes you have, the more performance you get. That's and it awesome. scales with it. Okay. Well, thanks very much for joining us today, Park. Thank you. So there you have it. Object storage and, and objects in general are really moving into the next generation. And one of the key challenges that enterprises face is how to meet the density and performance demands that object now requires. So Flashplate is an excellent example of doing that. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us.